The second important application that we need in, in this course is the concept of service integrals. And um, just to give you just to give you a motivation of why we need something like this, uh, very often in electromagnetics and in other branches of science, we want to calculate the flux of a certain quantity through a service. Um, for example, uh, we can talk about um, electric, uh, electric density J, which has units amperes per meter squared. It tells you how, how many amperes are flowing per unit area. Uh, and it can vary from one point to another. So if you want to calculate the total current going through a service, you have to, if you have, a, it's a very tiny area, you take the dot product between J at that point and the unit area. You try to project G in the direction normal to that area to get the current in amperes. But of course, if you have a complicated service like the one I'm showing you here on this side, um, the function G can change it from one, from one element, service element to another. And in that case, in order to calculate the flux of the vector quantity, uh, over each one of these elements, we do this calculation here. So the flux through each one of these elements is equal to the normal component multiplied by the area, and the normal component of, of a vector E is equal to the value of E cosine theta. And theta is the angle between the vector E as shown here. So if I if I if I just try to this one, this is E here, and this is the normal, this is the normal area, and this angle between them is what we call theta. And if this element is the ith service element, we call this alum is element theta i. And here I give the vector as well the subscript e because e can change, which is the magnitude of the vector. It can change from one point to another on, on every element. So on the ith element, it has a magnitude of ei. And its normal component is equal to ei cosine theta i. So in order to get the total flux from a service, you sum the contribution coming from each individual small service element. So you have to do the summation of EI, DSI, cosine theta I, as shown here. But this one, uh, as you know from the properties of dot product, when you have multiplied the magnitude of the first vector, magnitude of the second vector, cosine theta, this is simply equivalent to dot product. So what we are doing, we are actually doing a dot product between the electric field at every element, dot the, 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 the area vector at that differential element, and then we sum over all elements. Now, as n goes to infinity, so if we have infinite number of elements, so the size of every element becomes extremely small. This becomes what we call a service integral. So this service integral calculates the flux coming out from that service. And as you, as you could see here, it's denoted by, sometimes denoted by double integral, sometimes the both S and denoted by a single integral, but it's actually a double integral because you are integrating over a service. So we'll be integrating over two co coordinates, as the examples will show you. Of course, the S can be any one of the S we explained earlier. It can be one uh, DS in the X direction, DS in the Y direction, DS in Z direction in Cartesian coordinates in the rho, z, or phi direction cylindrical coordinates, in the r, theta, and phi, and phi directions in, this, in the spherical coordinates. It can be any one of these. It depends on the problem, uh, and then we can carry out these integrals to get the total flux. The best way to explain service integrals are through examples. So I thought of giving you this example here. Uh, we have a vector function f. You can think of it as, as uh, uh, current density. It's an ampere per meter squared. And we want to determine the scalar service integral. We want to determine the total current flowing out from a closed service. Closed service um, is really a service you know, where we are doing the integral over the whole service. It includes a volume. So when I say closed cylinder, I mean it's, it's a complete cylinder that includes a volume. It's not, it's, it is as shown here in this figure, it is, the, um, it is the bottom base, the top base, and the side. So it's a closed service. We want to get the total current, say, flowing out of that cylinder. And the cylinder is, given by, is bounded by two uh, coordinates. Z is equal to plus or equal to minus 3. And the radius rho is equal to 2. So 2 is the radius of the cylinder while uh, the height of the cylinder here is equal to 6, spanning from minus 3 to 3. Of course, we have all the components here given in, in, uh, in, uh, in cylindrical coordinates, 
And we can do it, of course, we can do all the integration in cylindrical coordinates. But just remember, because we don't have a single service, we have three services that compose um, uh, a closed service. There is a top, the top, the top uh, circle, there is a bottom circle, and there is a side wall as well. The unit normal to the top circle is in the z direction. The unit normal to the bottom circle is in the minus z direction. So we have to take this into account. We have to take this into account. Um, and, uh, and the side, of course, if you try to see the unit normal to the side area, is it actually in the root direction. So because of this discontinuity in the normal, we, we will not carry out a single service integral. We will carry out three service integrals. One over the top circle, the other one on the bottom circle, the, other, the third one is on the side wall. So let's see how this is done. We say that the, as I said before, we have three bars. So this is this is what we call a closed surface integral. And you notice this this circle here simply indicate that the surface is closed. It in completely encloses a volume, and a cylinder, including the side wall, the side wall, the top and the bottom circles, it does include. Uh, to, uh, to, to, or I should say the top and bottom disks. They define a, com a closed surface. So here we have three integrals, we have to carry each one of them. Remember for the top and bottom disk, if you take a look at the cylinder from the top, you see actually a circle. And this circle here, uh, if you see this is X and Y, if you want to define, it's of course the Z, the Z the coordinate is pointing out from the page, okay? If you see the unit the unit area here, we, try to, if we did this before actually, if you see the unit area, this is the unit differential area. This length here is equal to rho d phi, while this length here is equal to do d rho. Uh, so this is our unit area. It is rho d rho d phi, and it's pointing in the z direction. So uh, the same thing will happen for the bottom, but the only difference is that the bottom area, bottom uh, area, dif differential area vector is pointing in the minus z direction. For the side wall, and maybe we can draw this as well. If this is my cylinder, for the side wall, you are not really changing rho. You are only changing z. So this one here is dz. And this one here is changing phi. It is rho d phi. And this unit area is pointing in the rho direction. So for the side wall, we have a unit, a, a differential area vector rho d z rho d phi d z and rho here is a constant what is the value of this constant it is simply the radius of that cylinder carry out the three integrals as i said in the top face this is uh, the differential area vector uh, z doesn't change here because we are talking about the top disk unit vector in the direction of az it's, uh, it's a, the, the magnitude is rho d rho d phi for the bottom one it is the same area but it's pointing in the negative z direction. This is why I have this negative sign here. For the side side wall or the side service, as I explained, rho is a constant on the side service, so rho doesn't change. What is changing is only z and phi. So the area is equal rho d z d phi, and it's pointing in the rho direction. Why this is very important? Because when I take the dot product between my field and the top the top area vector i will keep only the z component because it's pointing in this direction when i take the dot product between my field and the uh, the bottom area vector here i will keep the z component as well because it doesn't have component in direction of phi or direction of z dot product remember f dot ds if if ds has only a z component then you will pick only the fz component and that's it the same thing is happening for the side wall. You can see that the differential area vector has only a row component. So when you do a dot product between this area and the vector, you're only taking the row component of your vector. So in, in substituting this, this is here the z component is equal to 3z. You multiply by rho d rho d phi. And of course, az dot az gives you 1. So z will disappear. For the bottom... Uh, area, uh, the unit the unit normal is minus az. This is why you have this negative sign here. The vector component is 3z, and you, you did, did a dot product with minus rho d rho d phi az, and you have az dot az gives, gives you 1. For the side wall, 
the component in the root direction is equal to 2 over root as shown here. So 2 over root a root, you dot product this with root d root d, uh, root d phi d z a root. A root dot a root will give you 1. So you have here this integral. So you have to carry an integral on each one of them. Of course, in the, to in the, top, in the top disk and bottom disk, uh, rho will go from 0 up to the radius, and phi will go from 0 up to 2 pi. This has to be very clear, because what we want to do, we want to integrate some all the contributions coming from all differential elements on this disk. So what we have to do, we have to make rho go from the center to the radius and go all the way around in phi. So this is why you can see here that the coordinates um, um, rho is from uh, the uh, the uh, the integrals that we have rho from zero up to two phi from zero up to two by in order to scan the whole disk. This is for the top and bottom disk. And luckily, because z in the bottom, of course, uh, z in the bottom disk is constant, and it's equal to uh, minus three. Z in the in the top disk is constant as equal to three. The, the integral does not have any dz. You are not integrating with respect to z. Z is a constant. So here this will give you nine. Dimension here will give you nine here, and these two integrals become identical. Become identical. The last one, rho will cancel out with rho. So you end up you want to integrate two d phi dz on this side wall. Two d phi dz. Of course, what will be our integration limit? We want to cover all values of phi and z. Phi always go all the way around from 0 to 2 pi. Z will go from minus 3 in the bottom desk to 3 in the top desk. So from minus 3 here to 3 here. And this is why you have the dimensions shown in this uh, integral here. What remains is very straightforward. The integral of rho is rho squared over 2. Uh, you first integrate the rho part. And then what remains, you integrate it relative to phi. You do the same exactly for the second integral. For the third one, because it's, it's d phi dz, you integrate dz, will give you z. You put the, top, the upper limit minus the lower limit, so you get 3 minus minus 3, then you get 6. The integral of d phi, you get phi. You put upper limit 2 pi minus 0, then you get 2 pi. So if you put all these numbers together, you get to see that the, the, the current, if I take a look at, consider this is the current, the current flowing from the top disk is equal to the current flowing from the bottom disk, both are equal to 36 by, and the current flowing from the side wall is equal to 24 by amperes, so the total integral will give you 96 by. So this is the value of this service integral, this is a flux coming out from this from this uh, closed service. So now we know what's meant by a closed service, and uh, we know how to calculate the integral uh, by dividing the closed service into uh, a number of services uh, where we can we can do it each one of them as a, as a, as a double integral. I decided to show you one more example here on spherical coordinates, see how uh, things are done for uh, for service integrals. We would like to calculate the flux of the field E equals 6 over R E R plus 0.1 over R squared E phi. This, of course, in spherical coordinates. Uh, through the, 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 uh, the spherical strip shown here. So this is part of the surface of a sphere. This is here. I'm not, uh, I hope I, the, the drawing is, is not that bad. Uh, this is part of the surface of a sphere. I'm just trying to illustrate it here. So we want to calculate the, the flux coming out from this service. Uh, and the angle of this strip, theta 1 is equal to pi over 6, so 30 degrees. Theta 2 is equal to pi over 3, so 60 degrees. And the, uh, the radius from the origin of this sphere is equal to 3 centimeters. So again, you have to define uh, what is your integral what is your normal this is not of course a closed service because it is just part of a sphere so it does not enclose a volume and here because r r is a constant you are actually integrating only over phi and theta so here i can take my element here on the service and this will be pointing in the in the r direction so as we said before this element will have two bars this one here is r sine theta d phi while this one here is r d theta. If you multiply them together, you get r squared sine theta, d theta d phi, and this is in the r direction. 
And because the surface has only an R component, the flux of the phi part is zero because the phi part is tangential to the surface. It does not create any flux. It's only the R component that will matter. We carry out our integral, as I, as I said, for ds here, we have uh, r squared sine theta d theta d phi, and of course I'm missing here that this is in the r direction, because it's pointing outward. Uh, when you take the dot product between e and ds, because ds, the differential service uh, vector, has only an r component, you pick only er, and this is what happens here. So this is 6 over, six over r multiplied by r squared sine theta d theta d phi, and the er dot er will give you 1. Of course, to cover this strip, to get the flux out of this strip, you have to integrate uh, theta from pi over 6 to pi over 3, and phi will go from 0 up to 2 pi. Now, what remains is carrying out these two integrals. The way we do multiple integrals, you first integrate relative to one of the parameters, and then you ignore the other one for now. So here we have sine theta d theta. We have to integrate this one first relative to theta from uh, from uh, pi over 6 to, to pi over 3. And of course, sine theta, um, sine uh, pi over 3, uh, this will give you square root 3 over 2. Uh, sine pi over 6, this will give you 1 half. So you can calculate this. One other thing I forgot to mention, when you multiply r squared by r, you end up by r. You end, up with, you end up with a value of r, and r here is a constant. It is a value of r on the surface, which is equal to 0.03, because the radius of this cylinder was 0.03. Uh, the last integral you have to do, after you did the integral with respect to theta, you integrate it to phi. The integral of d phi will give you phi. You put the upper limit minus the lower limit, then you end up with 2 pi. Of course, you can simplify this number, this, uh, this answer here, to get the final answer.